G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel as we take a look at round 14 and who I'm gonna be tipping this week. I'm not gonna to lie to you, my tipping has absolutely gone down the drain and I'm sure it's only gonna get worse this week because there's some pretty tough games. After a perfect round of tips last week, former friend of the show, Farmer Wants a Fife, has pulled away in top spot. Uh, he's leading by three votes with 78 overall tips. No, just kidding, we can still be friends. I'm actually languishing down in seventh spot at the moment, so I'm pretty irrelevant to this whole conversation anyway. Toby is definitely having a great tipping year and as I said he's three points clear in first so he's gaining a little bit of separation but you know let's not get caught up in silly things like who's winning the tipping competition let's just let's just move on to round 14. This week is the last of the three buy rounds and the first game of the week is West Coast hosting Essendon at Optus Stadium. Now the Eagles went into the buy coming off an embarrassing loss to the Swans at the SCG. I don't know what it is but the Eagles seem to have these hoodoos that they can never overcome for some reason. Another one is Hawthorne at the MCG who they actually have in a couple of weeks as well. I'm interested to see how the Eagles come out after the buy and that disappointing loss and they're coming up against a side who's kind of made them their bitch in recent years. The last two times these clubs met, Essendon absolutely belt to the Eagles including last year in Perth in the Eagles Premiership year. On the plus side for the Eagles it looks like Hearn and Yo will be available this week and they've probably been the Eagles best two players this year. Given the up and down nature of Essendon I've kind of given up trying to look too much into their form lines. They're coming off two pretty good wins in a row. They belted Carlton and then they beat Essendon last week in what was kind of a mini final. Essendon is playing some pretty good footy at the moment which means of course they're due for a disappointing loss. Especially this game which is really big in the context of their season because it could really keep their season alive with a big win here. Heppel's been really big for the Dons in recent weeks, but I do expect Hutchings will get the tagging job on merit this week, and I back him to do a pretty good job too. My head and all logic is telling me to back Essendon here. I think they match up well on the Eagles, and they can exploit the Eagles' weaknesses through their speed. Having said that, I've got a funny feeling the Eagles are actually going to win here. I'm going to tip with my heart, and say so the Eagles win a tight one by 10 points. Second game of the round is Sydney versus Hawthorne at the SCG. As I just alluded to, the Swans are coming into this game with some favourable form. They obviously belted the Eagles by eight goals last week. I'd say in what's been a disappointing season for the Swans so far this year, that was definitely their best performance of the season. Obviously, Buddy Franklin and Tom Papley went nuts and bagged five goals each last week, but to be honest, the Swans had winners all around the ground. Looking at their season holistically, Sydney haven't actually really been terrible at any stage, but they have dropped winnable games, especially at the start of the year. Their last five games has seen a notable improvement, and they may just be starting to find their groove now. The Hawks, on the other hand, come into this game off two disappointing losses against sides ranked similarly to themselves. History is on their side, though. They have actually beaten the Swans the last four times at the SCG. Following this, Hawthorne actually take on West Coast, Fremantle, Collingwood, and Geelong, so they're entering a massive block of their season. If they drop this one, finals will be a very tough ask considering how hard that fixture is. I'd imagine George Hewitt will go to Jager O'Meara in a tagging job this week, which will be an important matchup. I'm going to have to tip with the form line here, and I'm going to say Sydney win this game by 14 points. In the next game, we have Melbourne hosting Fremantle at the MCG. At the start of the year, if you had told me Melbourne versus Fremantle would be a battle between 6th and 16th, I'd have assumed that it was Melbourne that was 6th. See, the Demon struggles this year have been well documented. Obviously, they sit 3 and 9, and I think from now, they're just going to be looking for improvement rather than merely going for wins. Going into the bye, Melbourne were put to the sword by a Collingwood side that is admittedly playing some decent footy this year. While over time, we've seen mild improvement from Melbourne, they really haven't been able to put together a four-quarter performance, so that will be the challenge for them this week if they want to win. Michael Walters for Fremantle has obviously been in crazy good form, so I'd imagine he's the key matchup for Michael Hibbard this week. The Dockers form line, on the other hand, has obviously been really impressive. So impressive that it has prompted Jonathan Brown to say that they're actually better than the Eagles. Personally, I think that's a little bit sensationalist, but I do think Fremantle have quietly become a fairly good side. Recent injuries haven't actually slowed their momentum, which is pretty impressive. And it's also good to see them actually getting something out of Jesse Hogan now. Again, that is another big game for him coming up against his former side in Melbourne. At this stage, I'd say Fremantle comfortably look like they're going to make the finals, but this is a real danger game because if they lapse, they could drop it. Luckily for Fremantle, the MCG hosts no fears for them. They've always been fairly okay there, so I'm going to tip them to continue their form line. I'm going to say Fremantle win this game by 25 points. Next up is St Kilda hosting Brisbane at Marvel Stadium. When you stop and think about it, it's actually kind of interesting how vastly different the narratives have been between St Kilda and Brisbane this year. Both teams were bottom four last year, but Alan Richardson and the Saints are under pressure while Brisbane are being lauded as big improvers. But interestingly, only one win separates these sides on the ladder. I do think the Saints have had some ugly wins, but they have played with good spirit and endeavour and they are slowly improving. Last week was a bit of a painful slog up in Queensland, but they did just enough to record an important away win against Gold Coast. 
Jack Billings, as you know, went big last week and I gave him three votes and he's actually in the top 10 in my Brownlow count. The Saints do have a skerrick of finals hope, but the percentage of just 87 does hurt them. The Lions, I have to say, in my opinion, are still a more realistic option for finals than St. Kilda. After a good win a few weeks back against Hawthorne at home, they were embarrassed by Carlton and Pat Cripps. That means this is a really important away game for them to register four points. If they drop another game like this, I feel like they're at risk of undoing all their early season good form. I find this game particularly hard to tip to, but I'm going to have to tip the Lions here in a roller coaster game. They're going to win by four points. The next game of the round is Port Adelaide hosting Geelong at Adelaide Oval. For all the promise that Port have shown at times this year, they've intermittently failed to deliver on that promise, and that's why they sit currently outside the top eight. To play finals, winning away games is really important, and dropping a couple of winnable away games against Hawthorne and Fremantle has kind of hurt them. To be fair to them, they did beat the Eagles in Perth earlier this year, but I guess I've just come to expect a little bit more from Port because I rate the talent on their list. As far as I'm concerned, they're a definite chance to knock off the Cats this week, especially with the Cats coming off the bye and with such a good start to the year, there may be room for complacency. Geelong's last three trips to play Port in Adelaide have all been pretty fruitful. In fact, they've won the last three by over four goals. In fact, Geelong has actually knocked off the power 14 of the last 15 times they've played each other, with the first of this run coming in the 2007 Grand Final. Like I said, I can see the Cats being caught napping this week, which can happen to good teams when they've had an extended run of good form. To be fair, their form going into the bye was pretty devastating. They'd smash Richmond by 11 goals. I do want to tip an upset here, but equally I'm kind of sick of being burned by tipping port all the time. I'm going to tip conservatively. I'm going to say it's going to be a tight game, but Geelong's class will shine through. Geelong's going to win by 17 points. The final game of the round is the Doggies and the Magpies at Marvel Stadium. The Doggies were probably involved in one of the games of the season last week where they just overcame a fast-finishing Carlton. While there are definitely negatives to almost losing to Carlton, they did have a big positive in Josh Dunkley, who's having career-best form at the moment. He had 41 possessions. Dunkley's surge in form complements an already talented midfield group, and it'll be a big test for them this week coming against probably the best midfield unit in the competition in Collingwood. The Dogs are another one of those sides who aren't realistically a chance for finals, but mathematically they're still part of the race. If they lose this game, they'll be 5-8 and eight with a percentage of around 90, which is probably curtains for them. The Pies, on the other hand, they've won 8 of their last 9, and despite that, I actually don't think we've seen them in top flight this year. For the talent that they do have available to them on the list, I guess I thought they'd be more dominant at times this season. To be fair to them, though, they are sitting at 9-3, and three, comfortably in the top 4, and they have played some pretty good footy. But with them competing with GWS closely for a top 2 spot, every game becomes important now. The last time these two sides met, Grundy smashed... English 60 hit outs to 6. Interestingly though, in that game, Collingwood only won by 2 goals. From an Eagles fan perspective, I would love a Doggies upset here, but I just can't see it happening. I'm going to tip Collingwood to win this game fairly easily by 28 points. So there we go. That's all my tips for round 14. Thankfully, this is the last round with just six games. Before we end the video, though, I do have to give a quick shout out to the Fantasy League leader because I've done it with the footy tipping leader now and I just haven't done the fantasy one in a little while. Killer Prad is still leading the league. He's averaging 21.59 points a game, which is crazy good. And he's only narrowly ahead of Chad Booth in second place. Well done to those two boys in particular because they've been pretty much there and abouts for the whole season so far which is crazy. But anyway that's all we have time for now. I do have to get to work and I'm actually running kind of late. I'll be aiming to smash two or three more videos at least in my final week next week before I go to Europe so you will see this ugly mug again somewhere on YouTube very soon. Thanks guys I'll see you next time.